Hello everybody, thank you for joining our Grace for Today devotional, and I am Pastor Ken Maxey. I will be your host today. I'm the one that's going to be bringing the devotion, and uh, hopefully the Lord has inspired me with something good that we get to share with you today. So, um, you know, today is actually the last day of summer. It's September 21st, at least when we're recording this. Now, when you watch it, it may be a different day. But it is a beautiful morning right now. I think it's actually in the upper 50s. It's supposed to be about 75 degrees. should be a beautiful day. And uh, love that you guys are joining me here online. And I'm trying to get centered with the camera. Mm-hmm. I'm, using my, I'm using my phone. And like I said uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, sometimes my, my mouth moves and my voice comes later. So last week... Frank Stanley did our devotions. Thank you so much, Frank, for doing that. He always brings a great word, no matter where he teaches. And thank you for doing that, Frank. And I was able to take some time off last week. I don't know. Some of you may know this or not. Hi, Debbie. Glad you're joining us. And good to see the bells. Um, I am taking some classes, and I have periodically have projects that i got to finish up. And so last week... uh, because Frank and others took some of my responsibilities, I was able to knock out a couple projects. And so now I've kind of got a little bit of freedom now. So you hold on to your seats. Who knows? Uh, good morning, Jim. Glad to see you. Hey, I wanted to just uh, talk with you a little bit. Uh, like I said, today is September 21st, and uh, this is the last day. This is the last day of summer, and tomorrow is the official start of fall, although today feels very fallish, I would think. Good morning, Campbells and Mary. Glad you're with us. And uh, I was just looking at, like, what are our national holidays today? Happy Tuesday to you, Don. Do you know that we have several, several holidays today, national holidays? So I just wanted to read a few of them to you. Good morning, Ruth. Glad you're joining us. Uh, Today is Harvest Moon Festival. Good morning, Shirley. And Karen, hi, welcome. Hi, Mary Rogers and the Rogers. Uh, International Day of Peace, Mid-Autumn Festival. Good morning, Kimby. Everybody enjoyed your desserts, by the way. Thank you for making those. Hi, Linda. Uh, Today is Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. I'm just going through um, some of our national holidays. I didn't know some of these existed. Hi, Rolanda. Glad you were here. Going to work after live. Okay. I hope you're alive when you go to work. (laughs) Um, Miniature Golf Day, National Chai Day, I'm sorry, I always mispronounce that, National Chai Day, National IT Professionals Day, here's one of my favorites, National Pecan Cookie Day. Good morning, Brian, glad you're joining us, good to see you. Um, And then the last one's World Alzheimer's Day, and I know they they had an Alzheimer's work uh, walk this weekend, and uh, what a good cause, Uh, I know many of us have been affected, uh, either a family member or uh, someone we know or love has been affected. So that's a great awareness. Uh, hi, Mary. Hi, Starlet. Shalom. Hello, John Mosman. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to see you. Might check on you about 2 o'clock at High V. All right, well, maybe I will. <laughs> oh, there's my mom and dad. You know, uh, and they, you know, I am their son, and they still get on here. I mean, all the, all the, stuff I put them through all those years and they still get on here. Um, glad to have you mom and dad. And there's our, uh, there's our faithful secretary uh, commenting on, uh, on our behalf. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, tomorrow, just real quick, tomorrow I just want you to be aware of, tomorrow is American Business Women's Day. So if you are uh, a, a lady who owns a business, uh, we celebrate you. We appreciate you tomorrow. <laughs> not today, not not the next day after tomorrow, but only tomorrow do we appreciate you. Uh, oh, hey, here's here you go. Chainmail Day is tomorrow. September 22nd is Chainmail Day. This is a national holiday. Um, September 22nd is Deer Diary Day. Yes, I know, Doug. Yes, they're still making sure I'm behaving. Yes, they still check in on me. <laughs> but with friends like you, Doug, it's very difficult to behave. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Good morning to you. Um, Again, it's fall equinox tomorrow. So tomorrow will be uh, half day, half night. It's 50-50. Tomorrow's Hobbit Day. September 22nd is Hobbit Day, believe it or not. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. National Elephant Appreciation Day is tomorrow <laughs> as well. Huh. National Girls Night in Day. I have no idea what that means. And here's for President Joe Biden. It is National Ice Cream Cone Day. So go out to Baskin Robbins. I know McDowell's. They, 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 uh, uh, Ryan and Anna McDowell now own Baskin Robbins. And they used to go to our church. In fact, uh, Ryan was our children's pastor for uh, about a year or two. And uh, they own Baskin Robbins. Go there tomorrow and tell them that Ken Maxey said we were supposed to celebrate National Ice Cream Cone Day. And you know what? I was going to say maybe they'll give you a discount. But knowing that I sent you, they may not give you a discount. So I'm just saying, it's at your own risk. And then it's National Singles Day, National Temperature Control Day. And National White Chocolate Day. Those are all tomorrow. Those are, that's a much better day tomorrow. Wednesday is much better. Plus, you get uh, you get midweek uh, anchor Pastor Rick. <laughs> well, anyway, we're glad we're glad that you're here. I am glad that you're here, and uh, we are going to look at Exodus chapter eight. That's what we're looking at today. Exodus chapter eight, and. Um, I want to tell you a story about a farmer who was up on his barn, and he was up there, and uh, he was he was shingling. He was up to the top, you know. It was a very uh, steep. It was like a twelve twelve pitch. It was very steep, and, and that's about all I know about roofing. And he slipped and he fell. Now this is a very high barn, and he's he's sliding down the roof. He's he begins to cry out to the Lord. He says, Lord, if you save me from this. I will give my life to you. I will quit uh, doing all kinds of things. I'll quit drinking and swearing and carousing, and I'll give to the church, and I'll do all these things if you just save me from this, this my demise. And as he was going over the edge, he, uh, he tried to reach out, and he couldn't grab anything. But as he was going over the edge, and he was just about ready to fall to the ground, his belt loop caught a nail, and, it, and, it, and he was hung up, and he was just hanging there, and it saved him from falling to the ground. And the, the farmer responded. He looked up and he says, Never mind, Lord. The nail saved me. <laughs> oh, don't we all do that? When we get into trouble or we get into crisis, we, we cry out to the Lord. And then when, when something comes along and the Lord puts something in our place to help save us or rescue us, then we're like, okay, we've got it from here. Thank you, Lord. You can go about your business. Well, in Exodus, we kind of see the same thing happening with the Pharaoh. If you remember, we've been going through the plagues, and the first one was the water turning into blood, and then the second one was the was was the frogs were coming up out of the ground, and the frogs were everywhere. They were in the beds, they were in the ovens, anywhere you turned, anywhere you walked, there were frogs, and the Pharaoh was so uh, they were so disgusted. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. That was good. That was good. Thank you. I did nail that one, didn't I? Um, he was so disgusted that he, that he said, okay, fine, fine. Just make these frogs go away. Whatever your God wants, just get these frogs taken away. And, and interesting enough, Moses said, okay, God will do that. You pick the time. And Pharaoh said, the next day, I want these all gone. Why he didn't say right then, I don't know. But perhaps some people speculated that the Pharaoh wanted to give enough time to show the people that this God was not going to come through and and everybody was going to gather around. And when it didn't happen, uh, they could say, oh, their God is no no good. And look, our frog God, I forgot, Hepit or Heptit, was, uh, was stronger than Jehovah. Well, lo and behold, Jehovah, our God, came through and, and all the dog, all the frogs died. They scooped them up. And it said that the land stank. It stank from the smell of the dead frogs. Well, today now we see something uh, going on with Pharaoh. After that happened, after God took away the frogs, you would think the Pharaoh would be pretty impressed and willing to give his country and let, let uh, to God and let the Israelites go and worship the God in the wilderness. But no, nope. He went right back to his ways, and the and the Bible says that his heart was hardened again. And throughout the book of Exodus, you'll see where it mentions that the Pharaoh's heart was hardened, either by God or by himself. But ultimately, it was Pharaoh who hardened his own heart. So let's look at uh, Exodus chapter 8, verses 16 through 18. It reads this. 
So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land, so that it may become lice throughout all of the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand and with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice. Some people uh, say gnats. Others, I've, said, I've read, uh, it became mosquitoes. Either way, it was a very annoying uh, creature that came out. Uh, it became lice on man and beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now the magi magicians so worked their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice on man and beast. Then the magicians said to the Pharaoh, and listen here, they said to him, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had said. All right, so what's interesting about this one is if you read the plagues, there are ten plagues. The tenth, the tenth one is the death of the firstborn. That is, so, that is different from every other plague that comes along. And it very much symbolizes the death of the only begotten son who, uh, uh, through his death and the blood on the, on the doors, rescued the Israelites. So we're going to set number 10 aside, all right? So there's one through nine that we're dealing with here, and, and they come in sets of three. Now, the first one was the blood of, of, of the water turning into blood. And you notice there that there was a warning that was given to the Pharaoh, and there was a time that was set. And, um, and then the second one was there was still a warning given, but it was done immediately. Now, this third one, there is no warning to the Pharaoh, and it is done right then. And Moses is instructed by God to tell Aaron to strike the land, and, and the plague would happen. And so when Aaron did that, the lice came forth. There was no, no warning. Now, in the two previous times, you remember that the magicians were able to duplicate what Aaron and Moses, what God had done through Aaron and Moses. But this time, they could not do it. And you would think, okay, turning water into blood, that would not be very easy to do. Um, bringing frogs up out of the ground, that would not be very easy to do. But in this case, if you think about it, this case, the lice is coming to life out of the dust. That's what it tells us. That um, It says that it, the dust became lice. In, order, in other words, God gave life to the dust. This is only something that God can do. This is something that we really need to take note of, is that life only comes from God. The world tries to say that it doesn't, it, you know, um, Satan tries to pretend that it, he can duplicate what God can do, but life only comes from God. And that's why it's so precious to us. That's why it's so precious to us, and that's why many of us fight so hard for the, the, the life of the unborn. It's because that is a gift from God. And so when the Pharaoh's magicians realized what was going on, that's when they said, this is the finger of God. Even they realized that this was something that only God could do. Now, it said it happened throughout the whole land of Egypt, but what we need to realize is that um, this, was, this was not taking place in the region that the Israelites were part uh, were living at in that time. They were down in Goshen, and so they were protected from the lice, but the rest of Egypt had it everywhere. It was all over the place, just making life miserable. Um, why this is important that he would bring life out of, out of the dust is because they, you know, obviously they lived in a, in a desert area. Part of Egypt, or most of Egypt, was a desert area. And so the people of Egypt celebrated, or they worshipped a god named Set, S-E-T. And uh, he was supposed to be a pretty powerful god. And so they worshipped him. And, and can you imagine that here this, this Hebrew, this Moses, this, this wannabe Egyptian, um, he comes and says, I'm going to turn this dust into, into lice. It's going to make your life miserable. The, the dust that you guys worship and celebrate is the very thing that's going to come back and haunt you and make your life miserable. That's who my God is. Jehovah can take those things and can, and can punish you with it if you don't follow him and you don't obey him. The Pharaoh didn't believe him, and as a result, God used it to bring judgment upon the Pharaoh. Now, how does this all apply to us? That's the, that's the big question, isn't it? All these stories in the Old Testament, how do they apply to us? First of all, 
God is good to those who obey him, right? And he judges those who don't obey him. As I said earlier, this was taking place in the majority of the country of Egypt. The man and beast that had lice on them were the Egyptians, and yet the Lord was protecting the Israelites from this. Now, I'm sure there were some ripple effects as the economy gets worse and worse and worse because of, of all this happening, um, the, uh, the, the death of animals and the, uh, the, the slowdown of economy because of everything that's going on. I'm sure there were some ripple effects on, in the Israelites, but as far as direct uh, devastation from the lice, God was protecting them from that, and he was judging the nation of Israel. Secondly, it was we know that God is all-powerful. He has the power and authority over anything and everything. And um, just with his finger, just with his finger, he can shut down a nation. And, and yet we hold up our fists at the, at the Lord and say, we're going to do it our way. And with his finger, he can destroy a nation. He can bring judgment upon a nation. He is all-powerful. He has all authority. And lastly, God can bring life even out of out of dirt. And so that's what I want to just end on is the fact that in some area in your life you feel like um, there is nothing there. Think about it. In Genesis, it says that God brought the universe out of nothing. The Latin is ex nihilo, right? Out of nothing. God brings life. And perhaps there is a relationship that you have that uh, feels dried up. It is, it is just like dust. Perhaps there is a part of your life that you feel it's, it's just dead. The Lord brings life into those areas if you let him. If you open up your life to him, he can bring life into those situations that just feel all dried up and dead. Because where do we get life? It's from God, right? And you let Jesus Christ in your heart, and he will bring life into your relationships, into your, into your um, uh, work, workplace, into your schools, Wherever you go, God can bring life in those situations if you let him do it, okay? So God is good. He's good all the time. God has all the power and authority, and God can bring life into any situation if you let him. So I want you, uh, wherever you're at right now, just hang on. The Lord's got you. He's going to carry you through this. Um, he is good, and he is, he is he's just so good. Guys, thank you for joining me. I'm going to pray. Um, just a couple things that are coming up. We have the Educators Appreciation Dinner. Don't forget about that. Um, if you know any teachers, that's, ha that's happening this Saturday at, at Grace. And they can go on the website. They can sign up for that. Just go to the Connect uh, link and um, events page, and they should be able to sign up right there. We also have the Fall Festival that's coming up in about a month, and it's going to be a good time. So I uh, hope you guys can uh, bring your families out. It's October 24th, and I'm sure there's a few more things that are happening We've got Sunday School, we've got Growth Tracks, we've got New Believers Class. we got a whole bunch of stuff going on and great messages on Sunday morning from Pastor Josh. So there you go. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate it. The Lord is so good. I, um, he has always got a great word for us, doesn't he, in his, in his Bible. All right. I've talked enough. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this morning. Thank you for another beautiful morning that you've given to us. And uh, Lord, you are good to us. You are... Uh, your authority over everything, uh, you are powerful, uh, and yet you seek to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us because you love us so dearly. I pray for my friends that, that are out there, ones that are even listening to this later, that are dealing with issues in their life that they just feel like there is no life there, that it is all dried up and um, just there's despair. And Lord, I pray that you would pour your, your spirit into those situations and that you would bring up life and give them um, a newness, a, a joyfulness that they've never experienced in their relationships or in areas of their life, or finances or, or health or emotions. Lord, bring your spirit in there and, and revive them. And Lord, help us that when you... When you uh, answer our prayers, help us not to dismiss you and to go about our business and say, oh, well, it's all done now. We can move on. But Lord, help us to continue to give you the glory and the recognition that you deserve. You are a good father. Thank you so much. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, have a terrific Tuesday and enjoy the last day of summer. It's going to be a beautiful one. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.